All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once in a lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to do something that we haven't done before. We're going to do a reaction to a reaction. We're going to check out the channel Bless God Studios, which is run by a Christian commentator named Ruslan. He is going to react in turn to Patrick Bat Davis of Valuetainment. Yeah, this was a mouthful. The reason why I chose this video, guys, is because of the title, How Islam Became Protected and Overtook Christianity. And this is absolutely mind-blowing. Who would have thought we're going to see this in our lifetime? I certainly did not. I come from a Christian background myself. And moreover, I used to hate Islam with a vengeance. Therefore, I thought that Islam will never prosper. But now we see that the whole world is converting to Islam. And even Christian channels like Bless God Studios has to admit that Islam is overtaking Christianity. With no further ado, let's have a look. How did that happen? The evolution of where Christianity went, hey, the Judeo-Christian, the Christian, great nation, America. Yes. Look okay, kind of random, but I'm wondering why would anybody drink water out of a mason jar? Can't you just use a glass? It's the values and principles that we have. Where did the fall happen? I encourage anybody to find me a Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu documentary or film in the last 10 years that portrays someone that is a Christian in a positive way. Bruce Lawn. This is Patrick. Okay, there was a lot of sound effects for absolutely nothing. Just a bunch of people talking. With David Valuetainment, they had Charlie Kirk on. I've never met Charlie Kirk. I'm friendly with some of the folks from uh, his organization. And uh, I, I would like to have a conversation with them as well. But let's check this out. Sports teams will say, hey, you have to be a little bit more understanding about the Muslim religion, but Christianity, they Correct. can get... So how did that happen? The evolution of where Christianity went, hey, the Judeo-Christian, the Christian, great nation, America, yes. look at the values and principles that we have. Where did the fall happen? Boy, that, that's a powerful question. All right, let's cut it off right here. I can't hear this term any longer. Judeo-Christian, what does it even mean? If you look into the terminology Judeo-Christian, it has been phrased in 1821, which makes you wonder, of course, if Christianity is over 2,000 years old. And as you can see here, the term in this case referred to Jewish converts to Christianity. So the commentator here being a Christian and me personally coming from a Christian background, we of course understand that Christianity and Judaism are mutually exclusive. There is no such thing as Judeo-Christian values because Jews do not believe in Jesus Christ. Christians, on the other hand, do believe in Jesus Christ, but moreover, they worship Jesus Christ as God. Muslims, on the other hand, do believe in Jesus Christ, and they do believe that Jesus Christ was a prophet and the Messiah. So therefore, which two religions have more in common? Is it truly Christianity and Judaism, or is it Christianity and Islam? So the question is, when did this happen with regards to Christianity uh, no longer being a religion that people got to respect. Now, I have a very specific point that I'll I'll save about when this happened and why it happened. But let's listen to uh, what, what Charlie Kirk here says. Only an era in the '60s or '70s, okay. these revolutionaries took control of a lot of institutions, and the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times, got perverted and changed. I encourage anybody to find me a Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu documentary or film in the last 10 years that portrays someone that is a Christian in a positive light. Well, uh, we got Jesus Revolution now. That just hits streaming platforms. I think that portrays people in a positive light. 
And in fact, this was pinpointed recently. I can't. Remember. I just saw something, and I have to interrupt this video again. His hoodie. It says Yeshua's dream. First and foremost, what does this even mean? Yeshua's dream was Jesus God. Did God dream something? Is God dreaming for something? Is he wishing for something? What does this phrase mean, anyways? However, if he identifies with being Yeshua's dream, then I have to ask you right away: Are you still eating pork? Um, and Yeshua said, hey, guys, did not. Why is it the pastor always has to be like the abuser or the embezzler or the and you think there was a gentleman from the and recently I can't remember who an actor came what? out um, and he said, hey, guys, why is it the pastor always has to be like the abuser or the embezzler or the and you think there was a gentleman from the office that came out and said that, right? About the archetype, right? The archetype is OK, we had cut here anyways. The point is that within the Catholic Church, we have scandal after scandal after scandal of molestation, rape, etc., etc., you name it. So therefore, this is why we see the pastor in this stereotype. If you see a Bible in an Amazon film, you almost can assure that that person is going to be a villain or at the very least a hypocrite. Rarely is that the person that is going to be acting ethically, acting morally, and that's a complete change. And it's done rather subversively. Right? So would like us all to agree first that Hollywood is run by absolute degenerates. Once we understand that, we of course understand that nothing that comes from Hollywood can be of any value or can be truth. This is something that we have to lay out first. But the hypocrisy in the church that he speaks about is nothing new here. It's not Hollywood that portrays the people as hypocrites. Quite the opposite. The church fathers have been writing long, long books about this exact subject, that the biggest hypocrites are within the churches. Me, coming from the Balkans originally, I witnessed this hypocrisy within the churches. The most wicked men live in the church. There's a, a couple things I probably disagree with Charlie on, but I mean, he's kind of to kind of drop in some facts right now. In our, in our Bro, you're not adding any value to this discussion. Here's the thing. He's dropping the facts. Post, he's he's post dropping facts. The worldview, the moral view what is that this? came in in the post 60s, and it didn't really set in until now. It took 60 years, is hyper individualism. And I'm all for that entrepreneurship and for people to succeed. But you must balance that. You must counterbalance it with duty and obligations. If it's all about just the pursuit of your own pleasures and your own delights, you will be not just empty, I think you're going to be miserable. And so we build But that is actually a very interesting point. He speaks about duties and obligations. However, within Christianity, you do not really have duties and obligations. The Christians even poke fun at the Muslims. Ha <laughs> ha, they have to pray five times per day, but we are saved by grace. We're not saved by deeds. And that's exactly the problem. You don't have to do anything. You can eat pork, you can drink alcohol. What kind of duties are you speaking about? An entire society, I think, on this very dangerous moral pretext. And we wonder why we have the most depressed anxious generation in history. Hmm. I, I totally sympathize with every accusation of American Christianity that you could imagine. They could be hypocritical. Their churches are too big. They don't give enough to the poor. I think some of that is a little silly, but it is a fact. Some of that is silly and some of that is not true. Christians give like way more uh, than non-Christians to charities and uh, adopting babies and all kinds of stuff. Do they give more than the Muslims though? That's the real question. Kinds of stuff. Fact that as we have turned our back on American Christianity with the roots of it, that we are less free we are more confused and we are filling it with these other fake religions that we could talk about. The religion of anti-racism, mm. the religion of scientism, right? Even sure. earth worship at times, which is hyper, you know, <laughs> Gaia. Warming. Yeah, environmentalism. Yeah. And so there's a great book by Tom Holland. He calls it Dominion. It's not a great title, but he, it, Holland with an E. But yeah, it's how, the, how Christians remade, uh, revolutionized the world. I encourage everyone to read it. And he's actually a secular agnostic who argues that what we consider to be common sense, what we consider to be normal, is a, good. is a traditional inheritance from the Christian history. And you might not like Christianity. You might not believe Jesus is the king of the world. I do. But you should at least accept that if you remove Christianity as the bedrock of your civilization, be careful what you fill it with, because currently we're filling it with garbage. Yeah. So, so a couple of things based on what you just said. One, I, I, I saw Andrew Schultz the other day. You know, Andrew Schultz, the comedian. I don't know if you're familiar with Andrew familiar, Schultz. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, to me, I think he's one of the most talented comedians. I can watch his clips on replay and the guy makes me laugh over and over again. There's really, only a couple really guys that make good. me do that. I've he, probably seen his clips. I just he, not he, you, you, Shout out to Andrew Schultz, man. I really appreciate, one, some of his takes, even though they're vulgar. Don't come for me in the comments. But, and I appreciate him being open about wanting to go to church and, uh, you know, going to church, enjoying church, faith. I think those are good things. You man. know who he is? Yeah. He's he's incredible. Cool. He great. said the other day, he Fantastic. went to church. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And he says he went to church the other day. He says in the first three minutes of being in church, he started crying. This isn't, that's not his brand at all. Mm -hmm. Andrew Schultz's brand is not to this say wasn't a that. Joke. No, this was no. not a joke. He was being serious about it, right? 
Now, if you go to the Justin Bieber story, and we can go to Hillsdale, you know, not Hillsdale, Hillsong. but the Hillsong and all yeah, that stuff. I Australia. saw that first time. Yeah. I saw a lot of it. Yeah, so a, a lot of that, the challenge then becomes also to say, sometimes, the, the, you know, it's overly judgmental on who's going to be the Christian to help bring the brand and, you know, bring others towards it. There's a challenge with that as well. But, you know, for me, I saw Wall Street Journal's article recently came Get out. Get to the points. Values. I'm sure you the saw that as well. The yeah. collapse of the American values. The American values. Patriotism, community That's right. involvement, having children and going to church have just descended in meaning. But money is up. Money is up. Yeah. And that's that hyper individualism. What is this? Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. Again, I'm a capitalist. I think that markets work, but they must be in harmony with other duties that make Which the money meaning, duties? meaningful. Otherwise, yeah. it's just nothing more than pleasure or things that will erode in dust. So it must point towards something. You must aim high. That was the Western ideal, right? A lot of people who are uh, um, Christians will go and they'll go in a community that's safe and they'll talk to one another where it's a safe place. Whereas Muslims will go out there and they'll baptize and they'll convert. Where, you know... Muslims are not baptizing. If you, if you look at the two and you'll say, well, one is quiet about it, the other one's being bold about it. One is advertising why he is, the other one is not. But at the same time, the media will defend Muslim, well, but that, the media that, will not the defend Christianity. The, the, the media, so he says the media will defend Islam and not Christianity. Okay, I'm, I, I'm gonna tell you guys why I think that is here in a second. Sports. All right, the video is already recorded, Ruslan, but I'm really wondering why you would interrupt it continuously without adding any type of value or any type of context to the discussion. So now, he mentioned the media. Do you really want to tell me that the media is displaying Islam in a positive light? Or oh, really? Of course not. In the media, Muslims are radical terrorists. The only quote-unquote positive coverage on Islam that you will see in the media is whitewashed Islam, liberalized Islam, so in short, everything that can be molded and fit into the liberal narrative of the West will be applauded. Teams will that's say, it. hey, you have that's to be a real understanding Islam. about the Muslim religion, but Christianity, they Correct. can get shots. So how did that happen? The media. He said the media will. Okay. So okay, here's, here's, here's what I know to be true. I remember the shift happened, and whether good or bad, I remember the shift happened around the time of 9-11. I remember there was kids at my school who weren't even practicing, but they definitely were being treated different because of 9-11. And after that, people were extremely more sensitive and delicate with Islam because there was an uptick in what you would call, I guess, Islamophobia, right? Sure. At the time. I remember specifically seeing stuff in New York. And I think in that process, what had happened was Islam got categorized as a protected class. And there are certain groups that get protected class status where you you cannot be as critical towards them. LGTV, Transformers, right? And this is, this is in the YouTube community guidelines. This is why someone like David Wood had to create multiple channels David, Are you David kidding Wood me? Hard. David Wood got away creating videos with millions and millions of views, ridiculing Islam, mocking Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and even eating the Quran on live stream. Pardon my French here, but you have to be absolutely ridiculous if you believe that David Wood got suppressed by YouTube in any meaningful fashion. The way that he presented his information was vulgar, was vile, was disgusting. Of course, this will go against community guidelines. Countless of creators got striked for way less than this. Just look into Islamic YouTube, man. You can't say anything that goes against the West. But sure, poor David Wood. Boo-hoo. It is, it is Pathetic. sometimes um, necessary, right? And so in that, he had to create multiple channels to spread out the attention that he was getting and give his main channel away to a, a, a Christian apologist. Sure, to be of eating Korans, of letting cats run over the Koran, of mocking the prophet. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Young lady uh, from Europe. She's, she's awesome. And so I think the, the, the crux of this, in terms of everything Charlie said, I think this happened after 9-11 that this community became a protected class. And because it, it became a protected class, you couldn't be as critical, whereas with Christianity... This is absolute bogus, man. Do you really believe that the Muslims need the media as a protector? How ridiculous. Even before 9-11, Muslims know how to defend themselves. And moreover, if somebody attacks the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, Muslims stand up for him. Christians do not do that. So don't tell me they are protected class by the media. If anybody would say something bad about Jesus, you would say, oh, God for 
forgiven. But if somebody says something about Prophet Muhammad, he will suffer the consequence. No, it isn't. That's the difference. Opinion. It is still Let's viewed, be honest. and remember, perception is reality, as the dominant faith. And I think that's changing. I think the dominant faith right now is fringe leftism in the West. The dominant faith is liberalism, to express your own freedom. This is pushed through pop culture, this is pushed through social media. That is the true religion. And from that out on, you have many different fringe movements, such as transhumanism, veganism, social justice, etc., etc., you name it. All stems from liberalism. Objectively true, where we're defying what is biological Right, all that stuff. We're, we're defying all these things, and I think that is actually the, 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 the dominant view. I think Christianity has become like actual biblical worldview. Christianity is becoming less and less. And and Jaden, yeah, you're yes, absolutely. He's correct here. The Christians nowadays, even the Christians that identify truly as Christians, are not real Christians. They might be liberals. They might be conservatives. And that is their predominant worldview. It is not biblical Christianity. They have absolutely no clue. The, the overlap between leftism and new ageism is there for sure it's a lot of the i'm spiritual but not religious yep. i want the idea of being spiritual and having a spirituality but i don't want any of the accountability it's my truth versus the truth yep. i uh am am a part of the i i, I have a moral ground and I, I i morally grandstand against ideas i don't agree with but those are not allowed to be challenged right so if you listen to like progressive Christians, or you listen to folks from the leftist side, they will have it's so hilarious. Those people cannot re-identify really who the enemy is. They really believe that it's leftism. Leftism, 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 the boogeyman. Left versus right. You do not understand that the conservative Christians, quote unquote, are not real Christians either, man. If you go back in time, 30, 40, 50 years, those conservative Christians were against gay marriage. Nowadays, the same conservative Christians say, hey, you can do what you want. You can get married to a man. No worries, but please leave our children alone. Now fast forward 20, 30, 40, 100 years and you will see that the same conservative Christians will now allow sex change operations for children. Don't you see? It is a slippery slope. None of it is biblical. Morals. It's ridiculous. Like objective morals. Like listen to Brandon Robertson's conversation with Jeff Durbin and James Wright. He will make absolutely moral statements. Just they're the inverse of what the Bible says. Right? So it's, it's, just, it's just ironic that Christianity is viewed as a dominant view, even though it isn't, and therefore it doesn't have any of the protections, right? Um, that Islam has, or that uh, which protections tent, you know, different communities have in regards to that. And so you don't I understand either that Muslims actually work together; that the Muslims see themselves as the Ummah, they see themselves as the body of Islam, the community of Islam, and therefore they support each other. If a Muslim opens up shop. I go to the Muslim shop. Why would I support another shop? I give my money to the Muslim. And like this, the Ummah, the community is growing. Christians do not do that. I think that is That's specifically it. why with, with we don't need protection. Why they, they, have, they have this protective status is because of the, the real life issues they were dealing with, right? And, and by the way, I don't care what you believe. I don't care if you're part of the Transformers community. I don't care if See, you're, you don't care. what religion you are. I don't think anybody should be bullied or beaten or attacked for their views at all. Like Which makes you an absolute liberal yet again. So nobody should be attacked for their views. Okay, how about Nazis? Should they be attacked for their views? I don't think so, right? If trans people shouldn't be attacked for their views, Nazis shouldn't either. How about Should they be attacked for their views? Absolutely not. They should stay of course, because everybody can have their opinion, everybody can have their own worldview. Don't you understand it is a slippery slope? And moreover, how is this Christianity? How is this biblical? If you go into Leviticus, you will find if a man lies intimately with a male as if he were a woman, both men have committed a detestable, perverse, unnatural act. They shall most certainly be put to death. Their blood is on them. So your Bible says the homosexual should be put to death. But you tell me that nobody should be bullied? I, and I think what most is Christians agree. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Don't attack people for wow. their views. Don't attack people for their positions. Don't attack people for their identity, regardless of what that is. And that is exactly the issue, man. You stand for absolutely nothing. That's a very sensible position. Is I think it? when Why? groups who are marginalized get attacked, they will tend to overcorrect. And when they gain a little bit of power, they will weaponize it against the folks that attacked them once upon a time. I think that's what happens. 
And I think it's unfortunate. The hard part is if you don't have Jesus, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying I understand. The hard part is when you don't have Jesus and then you get a little power, what do you want to do? You want to poke, you want to poke your chest out. So there was people that were brutalized in the name of Jesus by people who I don't think were Christians. <laughs> and then the people who were brutalized now got a little bit of power, got a little influence, got a little clout. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to stick their chest out. They're going to... Right. Okay, wait a second. So those Christians were actually not really Christians. So they did not have Jesus, but you, you do have Jesus, right? So the Crusaders, none of them had Jesus. They were not really Christian. What are you saying, man? <laughs> not saying it's right, but I'm saying I understand how these things happen. That's so ridiculous. So what is the point? I think the point is for us as Christians, we got to be living out this gospel. We got to be living out this love your enemies aspect. We got to be, right? Okay. We have to live this out are you in drunk? a way where people may so many disagree jump cuts, with the Messiah we worship, but our daily lives are at least consistent and congruent with the things we profess. If we profess that we're born again, if we profess that we're to love our neighbor as ourselves, if we profess that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, if we profess that we are to care for the least of these, if we are profess, at least if our, li or if our lives line up, then you can not be dismissed as a hypocrite and say, well, you know what? I don't agree about their God and I don't agree their views on... Christian sex ethic and all these things, but I respect that they're at least consistent. I respect, because what is the worst thing you can be in the eyes of a non-believer? A hypocrite. Uh, when they can okay. point to your life. I genuinely did not understand what you're trying to say here. So you say we should love our enemies, we should love our neighbor, etc., etc. A lot of love, love, love there. At the same time, you're complaining about radical leftism. So what is it now? Do you love the left? Do you love the trans folks? Do you love the gays? Do you love them all? And if you love them, what does it truly mean? If you love somebody truly, you should tell them the truth, of course. If you believe that this is wrong, or moreover, if your scripture says that this is wrong, then you have the obligation, the duty, to tell those people that this is wrong. I'm a father. If my son does something wrong, I'm going to discipline him. I'm going to tell him that he did wrong because it's good for him and because I love him. That is true love. I don't believe that nowadays Christians really understand what love is. They believe love is being meek, being passive, not saying anything. And the others, they're poking out their chest. Oh, gorillas, cavemen. You don't have to be a theist for this. You don't even have to be a psychologist to understand that your mindset is weak. And if this is the predominant mindset within the Christian world, then it is no wonder that Christianity will decline. So yeah, you it's claim so this, but you live this way. That's a bad luck, man. Right? So I think we need to make sure that we're being consistent and cohesive and on in line so with weird. the things we claim to be, or... But what, what are you in line doing? with? I don't get it. Right? What are we doing? Hey, this clip is from our daily after-party oh, stream. Wow, Ruslan, you said absolutely nothing, man. All right, this is it for today's video. Ruslan, you got one win, and that win is clickbaiting me into your video. I really believe this is going to be a video of why Islam is rising, etc., etc., you name it. But the point of the story is that we got absolutely no information. The only info, if you will, was from Valuetainment. I should have reacted to that video instead of to your video. But nevertheless, there was one lesson in this as well, because we saw your weak mindset. What are you standing for, man? You're not standing for true Christianity either. You're playing the same game like all the other Americans. Left versus right. Oh, the leftists are so crazy. Have you seen them? Blue hair. Woohoo! That's what you're playing. Left versus right. This political, this is new. This didn't exist during the time of Jesus. So you would have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? That's what real Christians do, correct? And if you look into the Bible then, and you assume that Jesus is God, God, then you have to get back to the Old Testament, then you have to get back to Leviticus, etc., etc., you name it, and there you will see the Mosaic Law. Jesus said as well that he did not come here to break the law, but this is, of course, willingly ignored by the Christians nowadays. Jesus did not eat pork. Jesus was circumcised. When Jesus prayed, he put his head on the ground, like Muslims do nowadays. The true followers of Jesus Christ are Muslims. All right, guys, but this is it for today's disappointing video. If you liked it, nevertheless, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.